You are now listening to Can't Feel the Heat, the unofficial podcast about the Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival. Our mission is to explore the complexities of Coachella, covering the news, music, artists, technology, and business of the festival. Please rate us on Apple Podcasts and subscribe on all of your favorite platforms. Follow us on Instagram at Can't Feel the Heat and check out our website at www.can'tfeeltheheat.com. Can't Feel the Heat is hosted by Tom Nash and Vanessa Franco. Welcome back to Can't Feel the Heat. I am your host, Tom Nash. Our co-host is Vanessa Franco. What's up, Vanessa? Hello, it's all happening. It's all happening really, really soon. Let's do it. And we got Angel Chavez back. Angel Chavez is a YouTuber covering all things Coachella. He's got over 100 videos all about the festival. Welcome back, Angel. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be back as many times as you want. I could be here every other week if you want. <laughs> yeah, man. it's I couldn't believe it had been over a year, actually, since we had last had you on the podcast. So, so much has changed, obviously, since then, and there's so much to catch up on. But before we do that, um, Vanessa, there's been some news about Coachella, obviously. Oh. What's what's the news update? We actually have news. Okay, so the Dulab lineup came out. Yay! We love Dulab. Dulab! Most exciting <laughs> thing for me is that Rebecca Black is going to be there. Do you remember her from, like, Friday? It's Friday, oh, yeah. Friday. Yeah, yeah everybody knows that She's gonna be song. there DJing a set, right? So she's there. Is she playing on Friday? They didn't say, but I, she better be. I think she's doing like, <laughs> yeah. um, they announced the Frameworks in the Desert parties and she isn't on the Saturday party there. And I'm like, you missed an opportunity, man. Could have been there on Friday, Friday. Cause you gotta get down on Friday. So uh, that's really big. And Glitch Mob is gonna be there. Like I do labs always going off. We all know this. So that should be great. Also, they just dropped the Heineken House lineup. I'm pretty pumped for Flying Lotus and Thundercat on weekend one. I mean, just Thundercat could just show up like anywhere and I'd probably go see him. So I'm pretty pumped about that. Yes, I love Thundercat. So good. Let's do it. I hope he has like really weird outfits and hats like he did when he was at the festival last time. And uh, we're starting to see more parties like like I mentioned, Frameworks in the Desert. They're doing three nights out at one of the airfields nearby. Day Club, which is one that Golden Voice does, is happening in Palm Springs. Like, it's a dayside pool party. Everything is happening. So you can actually do a lot of Coachella without actually stepping foot at Coachella. In the festival. Which is weird. Yeah. yeah, another big thing, too, is the wristbands and the packaging is shipping. So I didn't get mine yet. Hoping to get it soon, but Angel, you got yours, right? Did you get a little sneak peek at what's in there? Yeah, so I just made an unboxing video on my YouTube channel about it. So I don't know how the coordination works with the shipping because I have people that live close by who got it like a week and a half before I did. And then people in like Ireland and Europe that I was talking to, they got theirs way in advance. So I was thinking maybe they're doing their national audience first, but out of nowhere, um, I just got that email, oh, your order is being processed. You're about to to get it. So I had a question too because I was a little scared. I'm like, are they going to ship on an email? What's like the shipping address? So I went to Festival Ticketing, which is the one that handles the, the actual bracelets. And it, it should tell you right there, like your ticket is in process. And if it says it's in process, you'll eventually get the email sent to you. So just make sure that's like your your tickets are on that website. And if there's any problems, you probably want to contact their their customer service, which I heard is kind of a nightmare, to be honest. Yeah, I can't get through to them at all. I actually didn't even get a confirmation email, even though they charged my credit card. So shout out to Festival Ticketing. Hit me up. I want to get my <laughs> box sooner <laughs> rather than later. Seriously. But um, moving on to the meat of the episode. So with this episode, we're going to do a hypothetical conceptual walkthrough of how the quintessential Coachella experts, Angel and Vanessa, are going to approach the festival based on the set time predictions from our good friend Michael Milano. Michael, if you're out there, we, you know, we'd love to reconnect with you. You're a good friend, and I know you're blowing up right now with your DJ business, but you do a great job putting out these set time predictions, and we're having a lot of fun like looking at them and thinking about, okay, what would we, what would, what would we want to see based on your predictions? Obviously, um, it's all totally hypothetical, and we're not going to get too hung up on like the conflicts and things like that. But looking at the set time predictions, which are out there on Reddit, if you just want to go ahead and Google Coachella set time predictions, we can see Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I'm really curious, like, Angel, how do you plan out Coachella? Like, for example, what would be the first thing that you're trying to see on Friday? So the first artist, 
uh, based on the hypothetical, it would be Giselle Wu and the Night Owls. Woo! And they are playing at 1 p.m., which kind of I for the last few years, because like I said, I got older as well uh, going to festival. I don't like to go super early because I don't want to be during the hottest times of the day. Like I'd rather come into the festival like around four, you know, enjoy the sun for a few hours and then the sunset and you enjoy the rest of the night. But this year, um, I definitely want to support locals. So Giselle Winter Night Owls, it's a local band from Cathedral City. And they play at once. So that's going to be me coming into the festival. And that's the first thing I'm going to do is go check them out. But they're playing in Sonora. They're playing in Sonora. So you will be in the air conditioning. Yeah. That is also that. my plan. I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to go ahead and assume that we're all going to get delayed at the gates as we do every year. We yeah. end one on Friday. And after we're in that hot sun, which, by the way, bring your water bottle when you're waiting to get in early. And then I'm going to go in and hightail it to the Sonora just to cool off and see Giselle Wu because she's amazing. Can't wait to see that band. Let's talk about Giselle Wu some more. I checked out her music. It seems more like folksy, right? Not not the kind of thing that there's many artists like that at Coachella. Almost like she's like borderline country almost kind of like the way it sounds. It's just like really like traditional. A, a little bit. Yeah, it's it's different. It sounds different. And she, because she also sings in Spanish. She has another group called Las Tias. She's part of another group called Las Tias. And they do like restaurants and other little concerts here in the Valley. So she sings in Spanish as well. So I think she's bringing that, combining both like those traditions together. So yeah, just Giselle Wu. And they have a song called Coachella Gold, which I recommend people check out. Um, it's literally about Coachella. So it's pretty cool. Right on, right on. Okay. So you get in there, you get there early, and you're saying like normally you're the kind of guy that gets there at 4 p.m., but come on, after three years of Coachella, <laughs> you know you want to get there early right away uh, this, this first time. I'm going to be 11, waiting until the yeah. gate opens. <laughs> Absolutely. I've always wanted to be that person, though. I always see videos of like people rushing the gate as soon as they open it, and I never... Yeah, I've never done it before, so maybe it'll be this year my first time. If I see you. Yeah, yeah you can do it. it. I've been that guy a couple times. It's not that hard. Most people are, like, lazy, and they're not, like, that worried about seeing Giselle Wu, right? Mm -hmm. And and even then, the gates open. They probably open at noon, I want to say. That's when the first artist in Yuma is, um, usually. So, yeah, get there early. It's a huge tip. If we were doing the tips podcast, that's what we would say is get there early. Uh, so you're on top of it, you're seeing Giselle Wu on Friday at 1 p.m. I love it. So looking at the map here, like, what do you think you would try to do after that? So Sonora stage, that's awesome. We'll be away from the heat for that, that performance because it's 1 o'clock. But then right after, um, I really don't want to see anybody till about 3. So what I, I like to do when I get to Coachella is buy merch. Um, I like to get either a T-shirt, maybe a sweater, depending on what they have. But definitely a Coachella merch and then... Maybe another artist, depending on, on how it looks. But I like to get it early. That way I get it out of the way. And I'm not worried about merch on Friday or Saturday or Sunday. I'm just enjoying the festival the rest of the weekend. So I think I'm just going to go um, get some merch right after Giselle Wu. That's interesting. I like to go at night. I like to go when the headliner is on because nobody's there. That is true. Do you have like a favorite thing that you've gotten over the years, Angel? Uh, the thing, yeah, the, the Coachella 20, I want to say, I don't know if it's 2018 or 2019. I got this nice little thin sweater. It's like a little a sip up sweater for, that just has a Coachella lineup in the back. But I've worn that so many times because it's so thin. And right here in the desert, it gets so hot. So I could wear that in the winter, spring, you know, and I like to wear that one. Just it's my favorite sweater. <laughs> I love it. I love it. OK, so you got your merch. You're relaxing a little bit. You're beating the heat. What's like the next thing on your radar that you like could not miss after that? So the next thing would be going to the main stage to watch Corday at 315. He's a rapper. Um, I like a few of his songs. He has some songs with Anderson Pack that are just amazing. Maybe he'll bring them out as a guest performance. We don't know. But maybe it's too early for guest performances. But Oh, no. that can, I think that could happen. We should see it. Let me look on Silk Sonic is, is playing in Vegas. If Silk Sonic's not in Vegas that weekend, I think we could totally see Anderson show up. That would be awesome. That would be amazing. Man, Anderson Park was one of my favorite artists in 2019. I love that guy. So talented, man. He's so much fun. And Corday just released a new album. Yeah, I feel like he's really an up-and-coming rapper. The album didn't get, like, the best reviews. But even then, like, he's just a young guy putting out, um, you know, full yeah, album. Yeah, he's still so young. He's got so much potential. So I think this is the kind of thing, like, that I'm going for in the vibe. Like, I'm really just trying to see, like, the most, like, high energy, up-and-coming music like i i'm not so into like seeing like the slower like more established acts thinking about like coachella and 
after three years, I just want to see like high energy, young stuff and really feel that energy. Yeah. Just change it up and discover new artists. So, um, so after Corday, well, Carly Rae Jepsen, she's not yes. on the prediction. Yeah. That's changed. That changed. Oh, she's not. Did they move her? The projection? No, well, in the prediction, she was was she was at the main stage in the prediction. Now she's at the do lab. Now, oh no, no, that's Rebecca Black. Oh, Rebecca. Oh, I'm so confused. <laughs> no, it's funny that you confuse those two because I was gonna make like a joke about Carly Rae Jepsen and Rebecca Black. Like shout out to like shout out to like <laughs> you know like ten songs. years yeah. ago, like top forty artists. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It was, I was so confused. I could see you could have confused those Carly of, of the two. Carly Rae Jepsen's had like the much better career and like turned into an indie pop darling. Where Rebecca Black is like turned into a DJ that plays in the do lab. That's funny that oh, you wouldn't have bad. like yeah. predicted that like <laughs> automatically. But yeah, Carly Rae Jepsen's amazing. Like she puts out like yeah, she had her album Emotions, which like put her like permanently on the map as like an indie pop icon and her songs. They're just so fun, so dancey. I it would it's the kind of thing that I would have wanted to go see, but then like it's like okay, can I really like justify going to see Carly Rae Jepsen? Yes. But at Coachella, <laughs> yes. yes. If it's gonna be at Coachella, yes. you're gonna you definitely check it out. That's why I have it on the list as well. Cause um, one reason one I want to see like someone like her, I'm never gonna see anywhere else. Exactly. But the main reason is because Grupo Firme is playing right after, and that's probably one of my top three most anticipated artists to watch. Yes, I love it. That's see, I'm really upset. Because I'm mad that Carly Rae Jepsen and Idols, like, the, like if the set predictions are right, I'm like, I also may be one of the only people on the planet who's like, this is my biggest set conflict of the weekend. <laughs> because, like, I, you know, I want to go see the post-punk of Idols and maybe go on the notch bit and then also dance to Carly Rae Jepsen. So that one is, like, really tough for me. Like, I don't know, like, how, how where am I going to go? How am I going to do this? Because, and, like, if it's, it's going from Coachella stage to Gobi, that's, that's a hike. So I'm very, I'm very worried about this. I'm very worried about it and how I'm going to make it happen. It depends on how much sun you've gotten leading up to the point in that day because you'd probably be ready to get in the shade to see idols in the Gobi as opposed to spending more time in the sun if you've already like had your sun exposure earlier in the day. Because I'm going to say Angel, like going from Corday, Carly Rae Jepsen, Grupo Ferme on the main stage, you're going to be ready for some shade after that, my man, right? Yeah, definitely. Go to one of the small stages, like they said, the Gobi. So the one right after that fits on the schedule would be the Who. Yes. It's like a hard rock band from Mongolia. I just literally discovered them like a week and a half ago because I was I was kind of searching different artists. I usually try to go from the lowest ones on the lineup just to see what kind of music they have because sometimes you don't know. You might discover somebody you like. So I started watching their music videos and they literally sound like like Metallica or one of those, but... They have this like cool accent. Like I don't even understand the lyrics, but it, it, you feel the music <laughs> and the energy. It look, it's crazy. Yeah, I'm really excited for that Mongolian like folk metal with throat singing. Like when else am I gonna ever <laughs> see that? I'm not. I'm there. I'm there. I'm actually thinking I might try to make it all the way over to Yuma for one of Tom's favorites, Purple Disco Machine. I'm gonna try to go get into Yuma for a little bit to cool off and then hit the Who. That's my that's my plan at that point on Friday. I guess at some point I need to eat, but we'll figure that out later. <laughs> you won't be worried about that. You can eat anytime. You can eat when you're dead. It's Coachella. <laughs> You'll figure it out. Exactly. <laughs> One thing I want to say is uh, for Grupo Firme, they just had a concert like three days ago, Sunday, in Mexico City. They had like 75,000 people. Just at, It was them, just them by themselves. And like my brother was there actually because he was out there in Mexico. And he went to see them and like he sent me, I, I got videos from... It's just crazy, like the amount of fan base and they're going to be amazing. So I recommend them a lot. Yeah, I almost wonder if they could move them up later on the like, what if they switched Phoebe Bridgers and Grupo Firme? What if they did that? Makes sense to me. We've talked about Grupo Firme a couple of times because they're huge on Spotify, even like their numbers yeah. are would be like they're probably like one of the top acts on Friday in terms of overall um, Spotify listens. And it's almost like a tradition that they have like that big Hispanic act on the main stage on Friday. Like I'm there for it. It would be like the Los Tucanes de Tijuana were three years ago. Yeah. That's going to be a good one. I'm down. The only thing that I will like bounce off you two is I think that there's something about getting that first Sahara set in on Friday after Coachella for three years. That energy and just having like, okay, we're at full Coachella speed now. 
seeing like something absolutely go off in Sahara. So I'm looking at John Summit at 545. That could be a huge one. I don't know if you guys know about John Summit, but it's just that exact energy that you would expect. Like, okay, now we're going like this is full Coachella power at this moment. That would be a really good one that I would keep my eye on. It would be a tough conflict with Grupo Firme. I remember it was something similar three years ago where I was watching. Oh, I can't remember exactly who it was, but it was something like absolutely going off at Sahara. And you're like, okay, now like this is bouncing but then sprinting over to go see Los Tucanes de Tijuana on the main stage so I, I anticipate something similar happening <laughs> with me this that's year that's the thing because it's so hard now with the I mean is I'm glad that they set it up that way but with where Sahara is like it's so far. you know I've got to be committed to it and I don't know that there's anyone I am that committed to on Friday for Sahara like I don't know I like nobody's popping out to me right now um, I, I agree. There's, um, there's nobody that, I don't know that I don't, I'm not a big fan of the predictions for the Sahara tent. I feel like it could be a little bit better, but I'll definitely have to check out the Sahara because it's just, there's a different vibe there. It's more, I don't know. I feel like every time you go, no matter who's playing, you're going to have a good time with the Sahara tent. It's just, it's always energy in there. Yeah. So where do we leave it off? You're seeing the who, and that kind of almost brings you to sunset. So it's almost like eight o'clock at this point. Who do you want to close out the Friday night and make sure you don't miss? So Friday night, um, I was looking around because Lil Baby, I know he's big, but I'm not really a big fan of him. Um, Harry Styles, I, I hate missing the headliners. Um, like 90% of the time I want to watch the headliner because like it's Coachella. You always have something fun with the headliners, but I really want to see Big Sean. Big Sean is somebody I've wanted to see for the longest time. He kind of fell off over the last five years or six years, but he was really popular when I was like in high school and college in 2012, 2013, you know. So I want to see Big Sean. And um, it, it's hard because I don't know if he's big enough or worth it missing Harry Styles because it's a, you know, a headliner is going to be a great performance there. Maybe he brings that one direction. Could be a predictions. And then um, if you're at the main stage, then you could stay for Swedish House Mafia. So that's like my my thing. I definitely want to see Swedish House Mafia, that's for sure. But I don't know if going to the Sahara just for a little bit and then coming back to Harry Styles, that's kind of conflicting. Okay. I'm going to Harry. I'm there for Harry. <laughs> I'm going to be there. Because when like just like what we were talking about with Carly Rae Jepsen, when else am I going to go see Harry Styles of my own accord? I'm not. Like, I'm going to go see him at Coachella. Yeah. And that's, my plan is Harry Styles, and then I'm going to end my night with King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard melting my face off. That is my plan on how I plan to go out on Friday. I love it. And Vanessa, remember we were joking around about how I was saying, ha ha, Harry Styles is going to play that One Direction song that goes like, she don't know she's beautiful. And then we were talking about like the One Direction reunion. Turns out I was looking into Harry Styles' set list and he plays that song like yeah. on his own without One yeah. Direction regularly. That's like a huge part of his set is that that One silly song. Songs. So, <laughs> yeah. And he just said he, he's coming out with a new album like a couple weeks after Coachella. So I think we might get some new music, which I think might make the internet explode. Like everybody watching the stream at home, all the Harry fans are going to go insane. I've got one other thing too. I was doing like some deep dive Coachella nerdisms and there's three artists that I found that played the first Coachella in 2019 that are playing this year in 2022. In 1999? What did I say? 2019. 2019. It does okay, feel yeah. like that was the first Coachella. It was so long ago. <laughs> yeah. I know one of them. You know one of them, it's spiritualized, right? No, that's not the one I was going to say. Richie Houghton is one. Okay, so you got two. Uh, spiritualized this one. So I, I almost want to just like pay homage because I was actually really into spiritualized way back. I'm trying to avoid the more like slower jams. And I feel it's like overall is music's just a little bit too low tempo, but I, I would definitely try to catch that. Um, lane eight is way up there for me. I definitely want to try to see lane eight on Friday as well. But I think that's a pretty good recap for Friday. Should we go ahead and move on to Saturday guys? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now here's the real question. How, like, I don't know what time I'm actually going to wake up after King Gizzard and Lizard Wizard has melted my face. I say that. I'm going to be there when gates open. But, like, are you like that? Like, do you, like, because Angel, or, or what, how do you feel about day two? Are you going to try to get there really early again? So, like I said, in normal years, I wouldn't. I would come into, like, four, 
just because I want to enjoy the night. I feel like the night's always better than just being hot. So, but this year again, I want to see um, Nick and Nicole at two thirty-five. So that means I have to be at the festival or heading to the festival, like going in at like one thirty. Thank you for that recommendation because you mentioned it the other day, and I've been so enjoying her music. That's exactly the kind of vibe that I'm looking for. She's so captivating, right? Yeah, she she's gonna be a huge star. She was born in the year two thousand. I feel like she's the Hispanic Billie Eilish. If nothing else, <laughs> they kind of look, they kind of this, like bear a striking resemblance. I don't know if you've seen a picture of her, but she just kind of looks like Billie Eilish to me. Yeah, but she's much more higher energy, right? She's she's hip hop artist. The, um. I heard it's like she got some trap beats. She's got a song with Los Azules. What is it? <laughs> Angeles Azules. Yes, Los Angeles Azules. Um, man, she's good. I love that. That this is a big find for me. I'm so glad that you gave her a shout out. I'm 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 excited. We'll definitely meet up at Nikki at Nikki Nicole. I'll see you there on, on Saturday at the Gobi. So yeah, that one's uh, start the festival on Saturday a little early, and then after that, um, I'm probably just gonna go. And explore the festival. I like to take a time during either Friday or Saturday to check out the Arctic Dome if that's coming back. It is. Um, Heineken, Yuma, and all this stuff. Also, Arctic Dome is coming back because I heard a rumor it wasn't. I saw on Reddit today that Odessa is going to be featured. That's exactly what I was going to tell you. I just heard that Odessa is going to be featured. So I think it's going to be pretty dope this year. And it's going to be air conditioned. Let's not forget. (laughs) Oh, that's one of the best. (laughs) Yeah, that would be a good one. Okay, so you're chilling. You're in Arctic Dome. What what comes next after that? So Saturday, um, in the middle of the day, there's not a lot of I want to see, like around like three or four. So I was thinking maybe checking out a little bit of Ed Maverick at the Sonora stage because, again, staying away from the heat. And he's really popular as well, Ed Maverick. He's like a young, um, he plays his guitar, young me- he's a Mexican artist. From there, um, I want to check out Anita at the main stage at like 5.15. I think that's going to be huge, huge set. It's going to be huge. She's super popular. Um worldwide and she said like talks on uh, tiktok's songs gone viral so is this the first year that we have tiktok kind of play a major role in the whole coachella set times like just the amount of plays and the way that like doja cab blew up on tiktok and all these other artists this is like the first coachella that kind of yeah. first tiktok coachella makes sense yeah. first tiktok coachella yeah i didn't know that that was her claim to fame because i thought she was this like huge i didn't know it was like a tiktok thing like i think that I think she's bigger than TikTok, right? Isn't she one of like the biggest artists in Brazil like for the last like several years? Anita, yeah. Well, Anita's big in Brazil, but she's super popular now everywhere. Like she's got a couple songs that everybody kind of knows. So um, yeah, I want to see Anita again, the same Coachella thing. You, ne- I'm never going to go to see an Anita concert in my life probably. So if she's at Coachella, it's like I'll watch it, you know, watch the performance. That's going to be crazy. That's going to be such a good one. Her shows have such huge... This is what I've seen online. The energy that she brings is just going to make that main stage absolutely pop off right before sunset. That'll be a great one on Saturday. I can't wait. So much fun. Yeah, I definitely want to see her. I feel like because I'm an elder, I have to go to Hot Ship or they throw me out, right? Like it's like paying that tribute <laughs> to like the, the Coachellas that we've all gone to before and our dance rock forefathers. I, I feel like I have to be at Hot Ship like around that. That's good, like that sunset kind of set. So I feel like I'm going to be there. You're preaching to the choir over here. I've seen them. Like, they're one of my favorite bands of all time. I'm curious if Angel has seen them before. Have you seen Hot Chip? No, I've never seen them. Dude, highlight that one. It, it's a great one. I think they're I think they're super influential. Yeah, man. I want you to see Hot Chip. I just think that would be like... Yeah. I, I don't know. There's something about Hot Chip. I just feel like they're the quintessential Coachella band. Like, they really are. The way that they're... A, like a full band but they're indie and like but they're um electronic is what i meant to say they just like they're it's such a big umbrella you know it's like something everyone can enjoy it's poppy but it's dancey it's it's the best so yeah man i highly recommend i, I gotta check it out no yeah because i don't uh, i was looking at the coachella thing and um after anita i was gonna take a break Usually cool off, get something to eat, drink, be at the beer gardens or hang out. Uh, but I'll definitely check a hot chip because I, I really don't want to see anyone on Saturday until Megan Thee Stallion um, at 750, 7.50 at the main stage. So um, there's a few artists that I kind of wanted to see, but I'm not going to be able to. So Freddie Gibbs um, and then this Rich Brian that's going to be yeah. at the Sahara. He's been huge and I've gotten a lot of comments. Rich Brian, check out Rich Brian. So I started watching some of his videos and like I'm like, wow, that looks interesting. But uh, I don't think I'll be able to make it all the way to the Sahara and then be back in time for Megan the Stallion. Like we were saying, it's just too yeah. much. It's just too much. 
Can you describe Rich Brian? That's one that another one that's not on my radar at all. He's uh he's just like a a fast rapper, but it's like it's hard to just you kind of have to watch his videos to be honest. I'm not a big okay. familiar with him, but he's he doesn't look like the way he raps, if that makes sense. He looks like a nerdy little kid or something, but he raps like really hard trap stuff. It's weird. Yeah, that's a good description. I think he's part of 88 Rising's Head in the Clouds kind of experience. I think he's on that collective label, too. Correct me if I'm wrong, Vanessa, but that's like 88 Rising was more of the thing for like Asian artists. Yeah, okay. yeah. And like they did the Head in the Clouds Festival that uh, Golden Voice is part of. Like, And they were like, it was like, 88 Rising, like, presents Head in the Clouds or something, was on the bottom of the poster back for 2020. So I'm kind of curious to see if, how they're going to curate that, if they're going to curate it at all, like, and kind of, like, make it make it special or what happens with that. But, yeah, I think that's going to be... I mean, it's going to be so hard that day. Like, I kind of feel like I'm going to go from, like, I need to go from Megan the Study, and I really want to see Turnstile, but I'm not missing Danny Elfman, right? Like, i got to mm-hmm. be back there for Danny Elfman, and I'm not going to miss that. I'm convinced that he's going to bring Trent Reznor out from Nine Inch Nails. Mm. And then, I mean, this one is just goofy. But for me, I because I just spent a stupid amount of money to buy a ticket to see My Chemical Romance. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to emo night. Yeah. I want to go see, like, I feel like at that point in my weekend, I'm going to be, like, slightly stressed out from, like, all of the work. And I'm just going to need to scream My Chemical Romance is I'm not okay, I promise, with, like, thousands of other people who feel the same way what's what's emo night it's a dj thing from la and they just play emo music like my chemical romance and like panic at the disco and um i don't know if they play dashboard confessional you can't really dance to dashboard confessional well that's sick I, I i used to love this kind of music back in like um high school and middle school like yes. the emo stuff yeah yeah taking back sunday taking um, back sunday yeah wow, that sounds awesome you can look up a playlist of emo night songs on spotify and just rock out vanessa i want to see this with you because i think this would be really fun for us to dance to this i'm this was the, this Damn. was my formative times you know in the high school i was very much in the minneapolis minnesota emo scene believe it or not that's a thing <laughs> and like i when i was 15 16 17 i used to you go to the shows and you'd wear a t-shirt and you'd leave and your t-shirt would just be covered completely soaked yeah. in sweat and you'd go outside in like the negative temperatures and almost die just trying to get your car <laughs> to change so yes yeah. like that yeah, that's that, huge we're gonna, we're gonna do that i feel like my entire like midlife crisis is just going to see all these emo and punk bands i used to see for like 10 bucks so i feel like i have to go to emo night for my heritage for my people for all of us punk rock kids and emo kids who who <laughs> remember what it was like before there's a hot topic in every every town <laughs> that's my campaign speech i guess for emo night so i'm, I'm definitely gonna go to that sing some taking back sunday tom and i are gonna have a great time but I really, everybody says that I need to see Flume, though. So it's like, how do I do this? I can't, I need, I need a cloning machine. There's actually a ton of conflicts. If I look between like 7 and 9, and or 7 and 10 on Saturday, I would probably see like every single one of these artists. Do you guys know about Coffee with a K? She's a yeah. young um, Jamaican artist who's released an EP a couple of years ago that won the Grammy for Best Reggae Album. And it was just her EP, and it won the Best Grammy. Wow. And now she just released her first album on friday and it's really good it's bigger than reggae like even though she's from jamaica and of course there's like a huge reggae influence um she's so young and so creative that there's actually it's more of like a lot of trap beats and she is like talk about like really cool up and coming artist um coffee like like i said just released her first album Uh, so that's that's right there like conflicting with hot chip and then we got chami Vanessa, we've talked about Chami before. I know that you, um, maybe you caught a little of his set earlier this summer. He plays yeah, like yeah. spiritually uplifting house music. He's collaborated with huge artists like Lady Gaga on her most recent album. Lady Gaga was supposed to come out with him in 2019. So he's a carryover, or 2020. He's a carryover from 2020. Easily could bring out Lady Gaga again. We'll see. Yeah. But, but she basically like announced that she was going to come out to Coachella and he was like the obvious person that she would come out to. He produced... Um, a lot of like a lot of the jams on her on her most recent work, so Chami's a big one. And we didn't talk about Brock Hampton yet playing this weekend too. Their last show ever. That's Brock their last Hampton, show, right? Like I feel like I gotta be there for part of that. Yeah, yeah. it's a, this is the the one that everybody you know even like when we get to the little nine nine p.m. Like you said, Flume, Danny Elfman, Brock Hampton, Twenty One Savage for me is just too many that I want to see. 
I want to see Danny Elfman for sure because Hans Zimmer was amazing. And exactly. It's a, it's, a cr- exactly. it's a great experience. And the one I'm most excited about on Saturday was just Strome. Yes. At the outdoor falling Danny Effman. Yes. I just discovered this artist as well. Like I'm not discovered, but I mean, it's just like I never really paid attention to their music. But I was watching less live performances from Strome and oh my God, he's like the greatest artist I've ever seen. <laughs> it was like when the last time he played, I knew absolutely nothing about him. And somebody was like, go, go see him. And I was like this. It was one of the best sets of the weekend. It was just so visual. It was so much fun. Yeah. So I feel like. I got to go get to Strome, which I think I can do. I think I can make it from emo night over to Strome and then Billie Eilish. Cause I got to see, I got to see Billie. I know that a lot of folks have other opinions on her, but I, I want to see what she does with this headlining set. I mean, she's coming off of this big tour. She's at the forum. I think like the week before, what does Billie do at Coachella? Like she was just at the Oscars the other night they won didn't they win she the won oscar? an oscar right? did she yeah. won an yeah. oscar yeah that's oscar. huge i and i picked beyonce in our in our oscar poll and i was like oh beyonce for sure is gonna win but she beat beyonce yeah we Crazy. have oscar winners oscar win and i think danny elfman probably has an oscar too oscar winners all at coachella yeah so i mean i feel like i've got to see her and yeah i feel like i have to see her we got to give a shout out to Caribou, big artist on Saturday, something I really would like to see. Disclosure is like my number three artist, I think, for the whole Coachella. I have to see Disclosure in the Sahara. So you're going to skip Billy. You're going to Disclosure. Disclosure is great. Richie Houghton, one of the OG original Coachella artists in twenty in 2000. No, 1999. Like, I can't even <laughs> say that number. <laughs> 1999, you got Richie Houghton. And then Lay Imperatrix. I was really happy, Angel, to see you give a shout out to Lay Imperatrix on your channel. It's something that I've been talking about for a while. I'm a huge Lay Imperatrix person. I got to see it. Do you, do you speak a little French, man? Or did you, did you learn that just for your video? <laughs> yeah, so I took um, four years of high school, which I didn't really learn much, just the basics. And then two years in community college. So... I don't really know French. Oh, yeah. So you have to see Lay Imperatrice. <laughs> I love yeah, it. Yes, so I know a little bit. Like, I can understand, like, I can understand more than I can speak, let's just say. If I watch a movie with subtitles, I can understand a good part of it, but I can't speak or the, I can't write anything in French. But I mean, Lay Imperatrice, uh, hopefully there's enough time because I do want to check out the end of Billie Eilish for the same thing. It's, she's going to do something special. Um, but I want to be there for Strome and then go to Billie Eilish, which is outdoor to the Coachella the Coachella State, so I might not be able to go to the Gobi. I don't know. Depends on how late Billy Eilish goes, so we'll see. The only other thing I would say for Saturday is there's this artist called Kari Pompu Pompu, who is a singer from Japan who does EDM music, and it's extremely high energy, fast BPMs. She wears these bright and colorful outfits. It's going to be crazy to see that. Well, I'm really trying to go for high energy stuff this year at Coachella. And this is that quintessential, almost like Blackpink was a few years ago. This is like the Japanese version of that. That's more like cartoonish and silly. But man, there's so much good stuff Friday night. I didn't even realize it. But now that we're talking through this, like everything like from Friday or every on Saturday night, everything from like 8 p.m. till the end of the show is like, fire it's gonna be such a good day and like we have to go both weekends almost <laughs> <laughs> i know moving on to sunday do we think that there's going to be a sunday service with kanye there's, we've, we've heard those who rumors knows? Um, d- who knows like you know we'll get a more accurate picture if we ask more, a magic eight ball who knows is what <laughs> i, I is say it, is kanye even gonna make it to headline at this point i don't know nobody silk knows sonic. <laughs> um, i know by the way silk sonic is totally open in april it looks like I feel like let's just make them come to Coachella. You know my thoughts on Kanye. I don't think he's going to be there. I won't believe in him. <laughs> Maybe he'll prove me wrong. And he's, but that's going to be a long day for Kanye. He's old. I mean, he's going to need a nap. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I mean, last time he did the 2 p.m., they ended like at 1.30 uh, when he performed with Kid Cudi, and then he had to come. Well, he was late for Sunday service last time, too, so I guess he didn't wake up in time. Yeah, so I don't know if he does it, like, I remember, like, we've had people go out at, like, 7 a.m. to get a spot. Like, how early are you willing to wake up and go to Sunday service? So last time I went, I was so tired from the night before. I had maybe, like, three hours of sleep because I, I, like, showered, drank a bunch of coffee, got there, like, an hour early, and he was, like, almost an hour and a half late. So 
oh man, we were just suffering because it was just so hot. We were just getting sunburned. And then by the time you finished, it was like one o'clock. I ended up going back home to take a nap and then coming back to the festival. <laughs> was it worth it? Was it worth it for Sunday service? Would you go again? I would go again. It was fun. What about you, Tom? It's worth it just to see like the last performance from DMX, right? I mean, not his last performance, but like... yeah. You saw DMX there, right? No, I didn't get to see. Oh well, he. Oh yeah, he did he come was up there, for a song. He? Yeah, he came up for yeah. a song. That is true. I didn't even think about that. There was a bunch of guests. They had a uh, Kid Cudi and um, Chance the Rapper. Yeah, I remember Chance being there. I watched it on the weird like Periscope YouTube feed while I was editing back at our uh, our place. The merch people were just buying like two hundred dollar sweatpants. Fifty dollar like, socks. Yeah, it was crazy. I did not I didn't, I didn't not buy any merch because I had no money left after going back to back weekends. But I saw some guy spend like two thousand dollars on on Kanye merch. Just he just bought a bunch of stuff, probably to resell online. But yeah. but then like that was the funniest thing because then they released all of it online, so you didn't have to wait like to get yeah. it there. <laughs> um, yeah, I remember that. We'll see if he does it. I don't know. Like I. <sighs> Let's see if he does it. Because didn't it, it took a part of the camping area too, didn't it? Like it took some of the camping away the way they did it. Yeah, some camping and some parking, I think. Yeah. And they, they literally, that was crazy on the documentary how they, the people left on Monday and then they brought in the trucks to like right after the people left. Like the, the turnaround to make that mountain and make it work. I don't know how Potsdam and them, they made it work. It was incredible. Yeah. But at this point it's there, like they have the infrastructure. Right, they, they didn't they didn't tear down the mountain. So. No, it's still, still there. The mountain's still there, so they could make it easier with planning. So okay, so if we if we all go to make it to Sunday service, then are we napping or are we going to go try to go straight in? I mean, it's Sunday. To be realistic, we I think we all might need a nap. I'm gonna go nap. <laughs> yeah, but if we get in, I mean, I kind of think I don't know. What is the first thing that you must see that day? So the first thing I must see is Banda MS. Uh, 415, which is a little early, like if Sunday service happens, I don't know if I'll be able to make it, but Banda MS, just a banda from Mexico, they're really popular. But at the same time, Duck Sauce is playing the Sahara almost the same time. And oh, mm. man. for me, oh. I love Duck Sauce. Last time they were at Coachella, like they're just amazing. So I'm kind of conflicted there, but I'm probably going to go Banda MS because I want to see Carol G right after. Yeah. Duck Sauce is my third artist who played the original 1999 Coachella. It's A-Track. A-Track, yeah. A-Track, one half of Duck Sauce. Pretty legit. That's that's awesome. Like, so how OG are you going to play in 1999 and be, like, a cool DJ and still come back in 2022 and still be a cool DJ? That's legit. Like, A-Track, you're a living legend. Yes. Uh, you got to see Duck Sauce. That's just, like, Mount that, Rushmore. That's- that's where I'm going to go. I think there we found out when I'm finally going to go to the Sahara test. We found it. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Vanessa, we got to meet up for that too. Yes. I think we, we finally found Because, right, because I want to see, like, I love Yola. I talked about it on our last podcast, how much I love Yola. But I'm also like, she's the same time as our, our Alton Goon, who, another one that we've talked about, we've really wanted to see. And I'm like, I love Yola. I really want to see her. She's also playing stagecoach. Same thing with Orville Peck. So I'm like, I love them both. I think they're both great. I'm going to go, I'm going to skip them at Coachella and hit them up at Stagecoach because I also, I want to see Viagra Boys and the Sonora. And actually, I just, I might just stay in the Sonora for quite some time on Sunday because I'm, it's going to be hot and I'm going to be tired and I'm going to need air conditioning because I'm old. <laughs> it's a perfect transition because I have to talk about something in the Sonora on Sunday at, um, predicted at 335. It's Molchat Doma. They are a Belarusian dark wave post-punk band from Minsk. I don't know if you follow global politics, but Belarus is basically a Russian, um, I don't want to say puppet state, but I guess I can't think of a better word to say. Like Belarus is basically where a lot of the Russian military was like staged and like came in through to invade Ukraine. Shout out to Belarus. Um, it's the, uh, it's very dark times right there right now. I know, um, you know people near and dear to my heart live right there in Minsk, and um, they've had to flee. They've had to leave the country too because of um, the craziness that's going on. 
So here's a band right from the belly of the beast. They're from Minsk. And their music is really powerful. It's really dark, really edgy, but also has kind of like the synth pop bounce to it. This is a big deal. They go see Moltrat Doma in the Sonora. Wow, like it just would bring tears to my eyes. Like these guys are on Instagram, on Twitter, talking about um, war and talking about how they're um, so against the war. They're they're currently doing a world tour. I think they're right now they're playing in Latin America. But like they put themselves out there as against the war. Like that's a big deal to go see them on Sonora. Um, I definitely want to make sure to catch that. That's that's a big deal. That sounds like a good one. I might check it out too. Because I, I definitely feel like you'll feel the emotions. They're going to, you know, I don't know. I never heard of them, but I'll check them out. They need our support. Like, they, this is a band that deserve. like, they put themselves out there as, like, being very much against, like, the actions of their home country. They might not be able to go back. I don't know how that works. Like, I'm not going to try to pretend like I understand the politics of Belarus, but they're coming. Like, I saw on Instagram or on Twitter the other day that they're they're in Mexico or something right now. So okay. they've already made it out. Like, they're not there. So I don't know what kind of home they have to go back to at this point if they're going to be, like, that vocal on, on online. I read somewhere that they're the top Russian language indie rock band. So that that's a huge deal to go see them. Sonora on Sunday is lit because right before them is Alton Goon, who's my number two yeah. act for the whole freaking weekend. And then after that is Viagra Boys, who uh, Vanessa, of course, I'm going to like I, listen to I that and get into that. them when one of your biggest artists. So this will be like a really good time to like beat the heat. It's the and, same like, time as Duck Sauce. <laughs> and, and Orville Peck. We haven't even talked about Orville Peck yet Orville. either. I'm going to go see him at He's Stagecoach, got music but you should go see him and his weird face mask, like playing weird alt country in the desert heat, mm-hmm. it's gonna be great. Um, yeah, that's so hard. Like, what's really weird is like as crazy as it is Saturday night. I feel like that's at like four o'clock or like really like the two o'clock to the five o'clock block on Sunday, and I'm like I can't be everywhere at once, and I'm sad about it. <laughs> I was curious to ask Angel if if you can explain the difference between Banda MSA and Grupo Firme. Is is there a difference? Are they kind of like? Would you say that it's like the exact same? in terms of yeah, like the style of music they play? So it's the exact same. So basically it's the same genre, the same style. They, they might even play okay. some, because usually bandas, they play popular songs that like every banda plays them. They're, they, someone else might have written them like 40 years ago, but everybody knows the, the lyrics to them. Got it. So they usually play like that. They start with like a, like a medley. They always have a medley. So the difference is Grupo Firme is like a millennial banda. So... One of the lead singers is gay. They they wear like colorful clothes. They have social media presence. They're like on TikTok, on Instagram. Got it. And then Banda MS is more, they're like more like 40 year olds, like more. It's like a generational gap, but the yes. sound is kind of the same. But in terms of yes. how they present themselves, there's a difference. Yeah. Banda MS say is, they're the more traditional or they're the more millennial? Banda MS is more the traditional. And Grupo okay. Firme is the millennial, like hype. They, they turn it up and they have like their, their colored hair, you know, like how the rappers have now. So Grupo Firme is the vibe. That's the one I want to watch the most. But I may say I wouldn't be too sad if I go see Duck Sauce instead. And I don't know. I'm still, we'll see. I, what I the, mean, the I feel like sometimes. Banda MASA is like just going to show up at Spotlight 29, right? Like I feel like yes. Banda MASA comes through enough that it's like, yes, it would be cool to see them there. And I think it will go over very well. But I feel like, yeah, it's it's you can there are other chances to see that. Exactly. I love it. So there's something I'm looking at the main stage right after Bond MSA, which I feel is also going to be like a show stealer. One of those huge artists that's going to absolutely break it down for everybody. It's Carol G. That's going to be a huge one on Sunday at the main stage. Are you, are you looking at that one, Angel, too, and trying to trying to catch that? Yeah, so my plan was Banda MS of Carol G because they're same stage. I like, but uh, um, if I go Duck Sauce, then I will travel all the way to the main stage to see Carol G. So she's one of the biggest artists like on the reggaeton genre. She has like three songs that are almost a billion views on YouTube. Yeah. Like three songs, like she's, she's that huge. Yeah. So like um, I kind of feel like honestly she should be later. Like she's so yeah. big. Like same she should be here, after man. Joji for sure. Joji's music is really sleepy. I I. I was really trying to get into Joji because he's got this song with Diplo 
that's lit and it's like that's a really good song but it's because he's with Diplo and like Diplo like brings out the vibe and makes it like high energy other than that like I got really into that one jam I can't think of it it's off on top of my head but other than that Joji is sleepy so he need, like nowhere near Carol G see so um Carol G should be later we'll see I think that that, that would make a lot more sense for her to open up for Doji Cat yeah I think uh, Carol G right at sunset would be nice. Kind of that's how like Bad Bunny was last time. Yeah. You know, I wonder if they have it that way because of Maggie Rogers over at the outdoor theater. Because Maggie Rogers is that quintessential kind of like laid back, like sunset outdoor theater vibe. I wonder if that's why, assuming that the set times are are like this, because then you're not going to have the sound bleed. Maybe it's like kind of like sleepy, sleepy. That's why. Although... I mean, we're all going to need at that point in the day. It'll probably be like Red Bull number three for me. (laughs) Shout out to Maggie Rogers, though. She's amazing. She's also super young. I have a really quick story about her that she got super famous because she was in this music program at NYU for pop music performance. That one of my best friends in my life, we've been friends since we were three years old, was an administrator in that program. And he told me this story about her that one day that they were having um, like a guest come into the music program called is Pharrell and Pharrell was like listening to the different singers in the music program and heard a bunch of different singers and it was like whatever he gave some feedback and then he heard Maggie Rogers sing and he like flipped out and was like you're gonna be a huge star so I've been following Maggie Rogers for many years and I'm like I just feel like I know her even though I don't know her like my friend knows her but yeah Maggie Rogers is awesome like I really want to see her out she was someone I wanted to see in 2019 and it was funny because she played opposite like Bad Bunny. No, it was Jay Balvin. She played on Saturday opposite Jay Balvin. And I like really wanted to go see her because of my connection with my friend. And then um, someone was my the guy I was with, my one of my other great friends was like, no, we no, 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 no. We got to go see Jay Balvin. So I'm glad <laughs> I saw Jay Balvin. It was obviously amazing. And I'm like so into seeing Gail G now specifically because almost her association with Jay Balvin. I feel like she's like the female J Balvin because they're both from Colombia and play reggaeton. Yeah. But I would definitely want to see um, Maggie Rogers this time. That would be like full circle for me. So where do we leave it off with you, Angel? I think we're still at Carol G. What do you want to try to see after that? Yeah. So Carol G, man, it's hard because again, it's just at this point, I feel like I'm going to be super tired, but I'm going to go to maybe Sierra Lennox. Um, and that's uh, that one is going to be more of a like almost like sit down. Last time there was a food section, like a beer garden that was yeah. by the outdoor that you could actually listen to the, the, the stage. So we might be doing that just like resting, just listening to some good music and um, getting ready for the headliners. So Doja Cat and Connie West at the main stage to end the night. Um, I don't think I wanted to get close to the stage, but I don't think I have the energy um, like I did 10 years ago to try to be in the front. So. So she has a funny story. Coachella 2011. I was at the main stage for like 11 hours to see Kanye. Mm. That is dedication. We ended up started with because Wiz Khalifa started playing at three. Mm-hmm. So we went yeah. from Wiz Khalifa to Jack's Mannequin. Nice. Man, I remember it was was it Death from Above? I don't know if that was Yeah. Mm, Sounds about Death right. Death from Above. And then damn, who were there? I, I I forgot, but I ended up seeing um the strokes and then Kanye. So it was, I was like, everybody yeah. that I want to see is going to be on the main stage. So I'm just going to stay in the main stage. So I was able to grab the, the front railing, like the black railing up to the stage, like mm-hmm. next to the speakers. So me and my friend, we stayed there for like 11 hours, like the worst pain I've ever been in. Like I wouldn't recommend that to anybody. So I won't do that ever again. But do you have the story now? You were yeah. there for that amazing Kanye concert. I love that show. It's on. Have you seen the thing on YouTube? Like they basically have, there's not a lot of Coachella content on YouTube where you can see full concerts, but that one's there. Yeah, that one got uploaded like last summer. I think someone posted it. Yeah. So I want to see Kanye. Like, he's one of my favorite artists of all time. I know he's crazy, but if he makes it to the festival, I want to be there because I'll, I'll be singing along to every one of his songs. But probably more to the side, a little bit to the left of the stage, close to like the beer gardens, just not being in the crowd, you know, just enjoying it. Well, there won't be anywhere near the hype for him. I just feel like... His reputation oh, dropped off so, so I much. I think everyone's going to no, show up to see what he Everyone's going to be there because everybody wants that clout. So everyone was supposed to post on Instagram that they're watching Kanye. He's yeah. going to maybe bring out Travis Scott, which is going to be uh, super crazy. Yeah. Weird. Maybe. Awkward. Awkward. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like he has, and then he's also so unpredictable. Like what's he going to rant about? Exactly. You know, it's like everyone wants to it, catch Is it going to be like, 
one of those shows where he like does like two songs and then is like ranting about the government? Or is it going to yeah. be like a Coliseum <laughs> show a couple months ago that he just like nailed it? Like, who knows? Yeah. I mean, we're like, yeah, they, I, you have to go like from a news angle. I know like my entire team is going to be there because we're like, what is Kanye going to do? Um, I hope he's really boring and just plays a really great set and then I don't have to write any kind of crazy thing. But who knows? <laughs> and I mean, like, I kind of feel like, because I'm trying to go, I feel like I'm just going to crisscross the field for the rest of the night. Like, I want to see Bia Badubi, Bia Badu, I still can't say her name correctly, in the Sonora. But then I really want to see, I feel like I should go see Phineas because I feel like Billy's going to show up there, right? Because Phineas yeah, won the Oscar. Yeah, it's very newsy. Yeah, like it's newsy. I got to go to Phineas. And then I feel like I need to see Run the Jewels because I always they always put on a good show. But then I'm going all the way to Sahara. And I really want to see the Italian band, Mainskin, Manskin. I actually have no idea how to pronounce their name. But I'm like, the ones that won Eurovision. And I'm like, they are just like fun. So I'm, I'm hoping to see them. But I'm not going to be able to see all of them because I'm going to have to run back for Kanye. And that's a, that's a lot, and I feel like I gotta gotta stay. You gotta stay the the course with Kanye on Sunday night. I also feel like I'm gonna go ahead and predict that he's gonna get pulled off. He's gonna like go over curfew. They're gonna uh, pull the plug on him. I will say that it's just easy for me because I'm not gonna be able to make a weekend one, so I can kind of like ride out the storm and just see what happens weekend one, and then. Weekend two, like I'll have a better idea what's going to happen for Kanye. So, yeah, weekend one, I think it's going to be absolutely crazy, and no one will have any idea what to expect for Kanye. Who knows if he even makes it back for weekend two? So that's just like my bias on this one. Uh, <laughs> what, what were you going to say, Angel? Yeah, so it, it's so unpredictable. Um, I want to say it's a Heritage Duke Dumas. So yeah, I know that's going to be amazing, but I, there's yes. no way I I can make it from there to see Kanye. So right? that's somebody yeah. I. I'm glad that. to hear you give a shout out to Duke Dumont. I feel like that's um, another like just like legacy artist. I, there's something about the way he sounds, which I just feel is like quintessentially Coachella. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of his. I really want to see that one. Um, another huge one for me is Jamie XX. It's like this is an artist that's just been on my radar forever. I've seen him before, and I never really got like that emotionally attached. Even though XX is like huge, like I just love that band. And I was even just like chatting with Vanessa about this the other day that like, if you if you just listen to the songs that he samples, there's so many jams. Like he, the guy has this amazing taste in music. He plays um, even like a shout out to um, Daryl Hall and John Oates, right? There's a song called Hold On that's just like, or no, um, I thought I had, on hold, on hold, not a hold on, on hold. Man, he, this guy has just got the, best ear in music that he just creates the most beautiful soundscapes and then it's just like this big atmospheric wave of sound and then the beat drops and it's just unbelievable he's a legend jamie xx like that is an artist that will define the 20s and 30s of my life he could bring out the whole xx which would be amazing i think the singer's name is romy the beautiful female singer that just melts your heart. So Jamie XX, you're a legend. Like we love you, Jamie XX on this podcast. <laughs> like I, you, we have to see Jamie XX. That's a huge deal. This is one of the artists that's like, okay, the lineup comes out. Oh, okay. Jamie XX, whatever. But then you like listen to it and you realize and all the memories come back and you remember seeing the XX and you remember like, okay, they were, they were on one of the small stages, right? Like, sorry, I don't have the data in front of me, but there's definitely a band that probably played like the Gobi or the Mojave, like, earlier in the day and just to have him rise up and now to like come back here at like the legend status, like playing the outdoor close out Sunday night. What a legend, like Jamie XX. We love you. It's so good. Like, thank you for everything you've done. Like this is, this is one of the artists that just like, wow, like it hits you like, wow, this is what Coachella is all about. Having these artists that have the most amazing ear and just drop the beats and make everyone dance. That's, Huge one, Jamie XX. Also, got to give a sh quick shout out to Fatboy Slim. If we can get into the Yuma, it's, yeah. I'm sure it's going to be so overcrowded. You're going to have but, to get there. Like, who are you giving up to get there in time to get in? That's the thing. The song Praise You is probably one of my like top three favorite songs of all time. At my wedding, 
I went on the stage and we had a band. I played a guitar solo to praise you. Like that's that's just an amazing song. I have a group of friends in San Diego that I remember we were on a party bus one time and the song Praise You dropped and that's like that's just one of my favorite songs. So you got to give a shout out to Fat Boy Slim. That would be so good to see that. It was crazy for him in Sahara when he played a few like five seven years ago, whatever it was. That's such a great artist. Um, legends, just legends here on Sunday night. Yeah, that's why I just think it's going to be hard to get in. Yeah. Like, I mean, how? what are you going to miss waiting in line to try to see Fat Boy Slim? And is it is it worth it? That's the thing. Is they need to make the Yuma bigger because, like, I think they know that the Yuma is just such a mess, like, with the lines and everything. People always jump those lines. At least get, like, either have the security lines be, like, more organized so people can't just, like, jump in and cut the lines. And I hope I just for a more organized, bigger Yuma that would be a really like obvious thing for them to upgrade the festival, especially if they're going to have artists like Fat Boy Slim in there, right? Because it's always been just such a mess trying to get in there. But so I hope that that would be um, a huge upgrade for this year. I mean, if they're going to do that, I want a bigger Disco Shark inside too. Can I request <laughs> that? Or a second Disco Shark? Oh, <laughs> yeah, you just get two. <laughs> All right. So I think that just about wraps it up. Angel, you've got an amazing YouTube Everyone absolutely who's if you're following our podcast, I would hope you already know about Angel and his YouTube page. But Angel, can you just speak to that a little bit? Yeah, so I've been making Coachella videos for my first Coachella video was in 2011. And I kind of saw a void. Nobody was making Coachella related content. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to make Coachella videos. Back in 2018 is when I first started. And um, right now, over 100 videos all about Coachella. Right now, doing some some videos on like artists to watch, uh, some tip videos. And coming up soon, I'll be making videos on like places to visit in the valley and then places to eat if you're like around Coachella. So kind of helping out people coming to the festival. And I answer everyone's questions or whatever you guys have questions or concerns about. And then I just want everybody to have a good time and Coachella is like the best place on earth, so I just want to be part of it. So I love it. I'm curious, are you going to be recording a lot at Coachella or when you're there, do you kind of let your guard down and just like enjoy the moment? I usually enjoy the moment. So I record like the times when I'm walking from stage to stage. So I'll be doing some recording, but um, hopefully I have a friend who might be going to just to help me record so I don't have to be recording the nice. whole time. And then I also don't like to record when the artists are playing. Um, yeah. Other people do that. You don't need to do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like, it's cool to post on your Instagram story once in a while, but not like, I see people that literally have their phone up the whole time and it's like, why? Why? I don't know. I still don't understand. Why are you even here? Yeah. Yeah, like, we want to post on our stories, it's fine, like one one song or, or you know, just show your friends, but they're literally with their phone up, looking at the screen instead of the stage and it just blows my mind. Fantastic. So... People should look you up on YouTube. Do you still go by Warm Me A Full? Or is that like... Uh, you- that's on my Instagram, but on, on YouTube, it's just Angel Chavez. Just Angel Chavez on YouTube. and Or just type of Coachella Angel Chavez or Coachella Tips. And you'll probably see one of my videos on the, on the timeline. Wonderful. And everyone should follow the podcast. Of course, leave us a review. And check out our website, www.cantfeeltheheat.com. And follow us on Instagram, Twitter, everything at Can't Feel the Heat. Thanks so much for listening. You have just listened to Can't Feel the Heat, the Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival unofficial podcast. Please rate us on Apple Podcasts and subscribe on all of your favorite platforms. Follow us on Instagram at Can't Feel the Heat and check out our website at www.can'tfeeltheheat.com.